Hello and welcome to Cake Craft and Decoration Magazine DVD with myself, Cassie Brown. I've been airbrushing for about 10 years now, but I've been cake decorating since the age of 14 when I saw a lady make this beautiful orchid. These are sugar orchids that I've made here and they're all airbrushed. As you can see, you can be very, very delicate with an airbrush. There's some more techniques here, which is a sort of marbled effect. We have this stunning cake here, which I'll be showing you later on in the kitchen. We also have this pumpkin, which I've done this lovely carved effect. So first, I'm going to show you how to make this fabulous snow cake. So let's go to the kitchen. So now I'm going to show you how to use the airbrush. It's very simple. This is your airbrush here, and this is your compressor. Now what we're going to do to start with is turn it on. You can see the light goes on high. Now what we're going to do is press it to medium and then low. Now that slows the airflow down, it makes it easier to control. Now we have a constant flow of air coming out of this airbrush and this is our lever. When we pull the lever back, we're going to release the colour. So what we need to do now is put a little bit of colour in. We count the drops, one, two, three, four, should be plenty. And then we're going to go down to a piece of paper, we're going to gently pull back this trigger can you see the colours coming out immediately? But if I go really close, I can do a very fine line. Now the further away I am, and the more I pull back the trigger, the more the colour comes out. So this is how I'm going to be doing my shading effect, like so. We can also do some little dots. And let me just show you the difference. When we're really close, to get that fine line, now I'm going to keep my finger still and move away and then closer, away and then closer because you're going to need this later on when we do a little bit of shading. So now I'm going to show you how to make the, the mountains that we're going to do with the snow effect. We get a piece of paper and I'm just folding it in half. Get a knife just to cut that. And this is going to be our stencil that we're using today. Now hold the two pieces together, because then you're making two stencils at the same time. And with a pair of kitchen scissors, we're just going to do the, the snow effect. Now if you tear this paper, you'll get a lovely grass mountain effect as well. But I'm just doing a snow one today, like so. And then we're ready to start airbrushing on our cake. So make sure you've got colour in your airbrush and then we're going to put the stencil along to see whereabouts we're going to put our mountains. We can hold the stencil up a little bit so we get that into the right position. Now I'm just going to rest it there while I turn my airbrush on again and to low. We always make sure that it's the right colour coming out of the airbrush, that's very important. And then we hold our stencil down and very gently I'm going to be half on and half off the paper to do this line. Now can you see I'm moving, it's on a little turntable and it's moving around as I'm going. And the air that's coming out of the airbrush is actually pushing the paper against. So let me just spin that to show you. That's our first mountain. Now we keep going round to do this. And we can change our mountains, they haven't got to be in the same position. We might want a nice higher one here. But we must make sure that this is tight to the, to the cake. I'm just going to show you how to... You can see there I've got a little bump. So we're going to turn that into a larger mountain in the background. Now this time we're not going to go all the way along. I'm just going to airbrush from the one mountain to the other. And I'm just coming back towards me. We don't want much colour, this is just a rough outline. As you can see it covers up any little mistakes there as well. Uh, maybe do a smaller one. And it just gives the idea of depth onto the cake. And you can gradually build that up all the way round. We might want some lower hills, maybe coming from here.
and stop there. We haven't got to go all the way along when we're doing this. Now I'm going to put my airbrush down and then I'm just going to cut this so it's a little bit shorter. Now I'm going to rest that to the bottom and as you can see now I can introduce some more mountains. To give that lovely snowy effect. And as I said previously, you haven't got to go all the way along. You can stop there and I think it looks really nice by doing that. Like so. And then we keep going all the way around. So now I'm going to show you how to do shading effects. It's a very simple effect to do and it looks stunning. You can use it on wedding cakes, birthday cakes, but this time I'm going to be doing it on this Christmas cake. So I've already got a little bit of blue colour in here. And what we're going to start doing is gently moving across the cake. Can you see that very pale bit of colour that I'm getting? Now let me just show you on paper what I'm actually doing here so you can see. I'm flicking the airbrush and as I'm flicking I pull back the trigger and then I'm releasing it so it's fading to nothing. This will stop you getting some lines in there. And we're very carefully coming down to our mountains because we don't want to go over the top of those. And then where we have a nice long bit we can do our our stretches. Now don't be too far away from your cake. If you're airbrushing over here and your cake's there, the colour's going to come out and get a little bit bored and float all around your kitchen. So please make sure you're close enough for the colour to actually hit that cake. So very carefully. Be careful of those mountains. Now to do this bit I'm just leaning down, please note the angle of the airbrush has changed slightly. And then I'm going to stop to put in my moon. So this is my sugar paste here, I'm just kneading it a little bit so it goes a little bit sticky. Now I don't want to add water to this because when I pull, pull this moon off I'm going to get a big wet patch which I don't want. So the idea is just to get it a little bit sticky in your hands, roll into a ball and then flatten. Now if you're not very good at doing this you can get circle cutters and obviously they're all different sizes as well so you can have whatever size moon you want. And then what I'm going to do is just place that on there and carefully, can you see how I'm moving it out gradually? Be careful not to lose that circle underneath because this is your template now. So if you have any square edges it will stand out. So make sure that's nice and, and round, like so. And now I think we're ready to start doing the shading again. So we pick the airbrush up, turn on and go to the low setting again. I'm just going to put a little bit more colour in now. One, two, three, four. And then we're going to start again whipping over this. So from side to side. Now I'm going to spray quite heavily on the top. So at the moment you can't see that it's really dark. We will build it up gradually as we're doing this. Because this is where we want it to be really dark. Now can you see I'm flicking now to build up where I want it dark. Now we make sure there's no lines in this because sometimes when we're doing this lines will appear so just make sure that there isn't any lines. If there is just gently go over. So remember earlier I showed you how to do that nice fine line. We're kind of doing that to colour it in a little bit more. So then I'm going heavier up here. And 
and then gradually move around the cake. So those four drops have gone. But you can see I've covered quite a large area. So I've put a few more in, ready to do the rest. So can you see I'm gently moving this around as well. Now for you at home, a top tip, if you use a cardboard box and cut the front out of the cardboard box and then you can use that as a little spray booth, you won't get the colour flying everywhere. Keep your kitchen nice and clean. So make sure we go all the way around with that. Now as you can see, I've done that and I haven't done the top on purpose. Just to show you, you can get a very nice crisp edge along the top. You haven't got to cover it with anything. And also, there's no colour at the bottom as well. But we are actually going to colour the top now. So I'm aiming down at the top and again, pull back the trigger. And again, we're going side to side. And this is going to be quite dark now. You see how it's turning colour? And can you see it's starting to go a little bit shiny? When it goes really shiny, that's when we need to leave it and then come back later. Now what we're going to do is introduce a little bit of black. So I'm, I've run out of colour and I'm going to put black in here now. So one, two, three, four, five black. Just make sure it is coming out as black. And then we're ready to spray. Now I'm going to hit this corner first, because that's the bit that I want dark. And again, we're just spinning it round as we're gradually doing this. So now I'm hitting the top and the side. Now this is where you have to be careful, you don't want to be too dark, too low down. So do it quite faint, and I would only go just under the moon with this. And then we're going to add some more black at, to the airbrush. And we keep going. Now don't worry about the sudden change because we'll go over it again in blue to make it all tone in. But we need to just get the colour difference right. And we need to make sure it goes all the way around the cake. You must remember a cake must look good at the back as well as the front. Especially when you take it to a wedding venue and they've got mirrors all around it. That can be quite interesting. So I'm just covering that now with quite a strong black. So now just even it out, make sure you've got that nice level and then it comes all the way round where it should. Once you've got that, we can start going back to the black uh, to the blue now. Sorry. So now I'm going to get rid of this colour. There's some black in here. This is a cleaning jar. So what we're going to do is spray the colour into the jar. Now, if you spray this directly into the sink, it will get really messy and it will fly around your kitchen again. So make sure it's contained in the cleaning jar. So there's no colour in there, and we're going to put the blue in. So it looks like I've used several shades of blue, but actually it's all the same blue. It's just blue and black together. And as you can see, now it turns into that lovely navy blue. So we're taking that blackness away now. And then I can turn this slightly darker as well. Just keep topping up on the blue. Now never put more than 10 drops in here because if you accidentally go wrong or tip, it will all fall out the top and you'll end up with a big blob of colour. So always 
keep adding the colour, it's much easier. And then keep going round until you're happy with that shading of colour. Just a little bit more on the top there. So now we're going to wait for that to dry. So I'm going to leave the moon on there and as you can see it's still really wet because it's shiny. Now as soon as that goes matte we'll start working back onto the moon. But now what I'm going to do is show you about mixing colours. I'm going to turn the airbrush on and turn it to that low setting again. And we're going to mix a green. Now the green that's straight out of the container is a very sharp green. One, two, three, four, five of those in there. So to tone it down I'm going to add some brown. And we're going to add four. One, two, three, four drops of brown. I'm going to give it a little wiggle. Now don't do this too much because it will all fly out the top, so just gently. And then we're going to test it on a piece of paper just to make sure it's the correct green. And you can see I haven't emptied it completely there, but the green comes out perfectly on top. So now what we're going to do is focus on here and do some little trees. So have a little look at your landscape and see where some trees might fit nicely. I'm going to just do a couple here. Now these are going to be very close, very small little triangles. You can see I'm not going, they're almost hiding behind the mountain there. Now be careful not to spray too much, because you'll end up with a wet mess. So I'm going to go onto the paper in a moment and show you exactly what I'm doing. So there's three trees in the background. So I'm just going to show you on the paper what I'm actually doing. Can you remember that very fine line that we did earlier? That's what I'm doing to colour my trees in. So I'm doing a tiny little triangle and then I'm colouring it in by going side to side. And that's my tree. If I do a mountain there you can see. So we can keep building up our little trees going all the way around. Now I'm going to show you how to do some big trees. So look at your picture and see where you want a big tree to go. I think I'm going to put mine just here. Now what we're going to do, again, that very fine line that we did earlier, and I'm going to draw a squiggly line. So find that position. It almost looks like a ghost. Now I'm going to start underneath. And again, do exactly the same thing. So I'm coming down and I'm doing a squiggly line. And one more. Like so. So that's one tree. Now it's down to the shading. We're going to cover these lines up by shading underneath. So very gently. And all I'm doing now is colouring in. But I'm getting rid of that line so you can't see it anymore. And then we move up and do a bit more up here. Again, it's just to get rid of that sharp line. It's very much like colouring in. But it will make it look like the tree has got snow on. and then right at the top. So we need to colour this, this line in here and make it go a little bit hazy. As if the snow's just fallen on certain areas. And of course if you want it more pointy, that's where you can turn it into a more of a pointed tree. If you want to do a star on the top, do you want to do maybe, for example here, I don't like that line, so I'm going to work closely and very gently pull back the trigger and move that line out, like so. And then we just need to do a little stalk at the bottom. Now be careful not to tip up, so always work directly onto your cake. And then do a little tree stump. 
now I'm going to show you how to reveal the moon. We're very carefully going to come over and just pick away. Can you see it's happening? Gently peel it down. Now this is why I didn't want you to add water because I wanted to peel it away to reveal a lovely circle. Obviously that paste is no good now so we can throw that away. And then we're going to take the airbrush, turn it on, turn it to low and then get the black we literally just need about three drops in here. Spray it on there, make sure it's the black coming through. And then very carefully we're going to do our moon. So I don't want to go over the blue on this, so remember the fine line we did earlier. I'm coming really close. And again, it's just like colouring in, that's all we're doing. We're gently shading. It does all need to be a little bit grey, but then I'm doing it darker on one side. Gently cover up any bits. And a little bit darker down there. Now make sure you stand back and just have a look. I'm going to do a little bit more on the top, I think. And come a little bit further to the edge. And then there's our moon, so that instantly looks 3D then we can finish. So now I'm going to show you a quick and easy way to make stars. I'm using this little tool here. This comes in a set of three and they're modelling tools. As you can see they look very similar to dental tools. All we're going to do, I'm going to use the pointed end of this one and then I'm going to start picking away at the icing. And then we're left with white underneath. Now I'm doing big stars at the moment and then you can just do little stars just by poking like so. And you want them to be randomly all over. Just wipe away any excess that you might have there. Do some really close and some far apart. If you're really clever, you could do different uh, star signs. If it was somebody's birthday. And then do that all over the cake. So I'm using some pearl white here, and we're going to put a nice shimmery little star on the top. So simply unscrew the lid. I'm just tipping a little bit out on tissue. There it is. And then we put our brush in there. And we're ready to stencil. So here I've got a lovely stencil. And I'm just going to place it in the centre. Now hold it down. And then with my shimmer on the brush, I'm going to just gently brush over. Do more dabbing really than and brush strokes. Make sure you get a nice even finish on there. And then we're ready to lift. So there we have it, our beautiful snow scene all complete. As you can see I've added ribbon around the board which just finishes it off. I've also added a little bit of diamante trim here. That just adds to a little bit of sparkle with the, with the stars going on. I've shown you how to make the trees, the hills, and also just this cake on its own, the shaded effect. You can do for birthday cakes, Christmas weddings, the list goes on. I've made some snowballs here, as you can see, just to add a little bit of interest. So I hope you've enjoyed this little project that I've shared with you. As you can see, the airbrush cake looks beautiful, and hopefully it's given you the confidence to get your airbrush out now and have a little go. Now we're going to go over to the studio for some top tips. So now I'm going to show you a quick tip on how to mix your colours. So again we turn the airbrush on and we go to the low setting and we make sure that the airbrush hasn't got any colour in it. Now I'm going to show you some different shades of green. So we've got yellow, 
if we do one, two, three, four, five drops of yellow, and then one, two drops of blue, give a little wiggle. Now it's always important to test on a little bit of paper first, just to make sure you've got the right colour coming out. As you can see I've got a bit of dirty colour there. Now what I'm going to do is turn my piece of paper to one side and then I'm going to gradually airbrush one area. Can you see how I'm going darker one side and lighter the other? Because you should never need to add white to your colours. It's all about going at the pressure. Now what you need to do is with a pen you just need to add on here that I did five yellow and two blue. Now by doing this you can build up a huge colour chart. So the next colour I'm going to do, I will empty my airbrush, make sure there's no colour in there again. Now this time I'm going to do the same, I'm going to, yeah I'll do the same mixture. We'll do yellow, one, two, three, four, five to two blue, one, two, give a little wiggle. Now this time I'm going to add some brown. So one, two, three, four, five brown. We give a little mix. Again we test it on there because we should be able to see a colour difference. And then do exactly the same as what we've just done. But you can see by adding the brown, I've got a more natural colour green. And again, just keep writing down all of the colours you do. So you know then that you've got a perfect colour reference and all your colours are written down so you're never going to forget what you've done. And five brown. So as you can see, keep going all the way down and you can build up a fabulous colour chart. So now I'm going to show you some handy tips using some stencils. First, this lovely one here. You can see there's some beautiful daisies along there. What I'm going to do is put them on the paper, turn the airbrush on and go to a low setting and we're going to put some blue in. Just a few drops here, one, two, three, four. Now I want to show some do's and don'ts first. So most people come to their stencil and they might do this. Now straight away when I remove that you can see that it goes very very hazy but also it's gone everywhere else over the stencil. So what I want you to try and do is hold the stencil down and come above the stencil and then gently pull back the lever and we colour in that one daisy. Now by doing this we're not going to go all over the place and as you can see you get a beautiful sharp finish. Now the next one I want to show you is about writing. So if you find it very hard to use a piping bag or you're not confident to write with an airbrush this does all the work for you. Now this one says it's Christmas time. I'm going to hold it down again. This time I'm going to just do the bottom of each line of the wording. Um, and I'm going to do my berries. Now I'm going to change the colour. And let's put a brown through there. Make sure it is brown coming out. There it is. And then we're going to do the top of the stencil. So I know at the moment it does look a little bit messy. But then once we reveal, as you can see, perfect. Now the next one is when you're buying stencils. I want you to look inside them and see all the wonderful patterns that you can get. This one here, if I do the stencil all over, it is a lovely pattern on its own. 
as you can see. But now if I just touch the centre and go round in a circle, I also get a different star shape. Also, let's just pick out these tiny little areas here. Let me do a few in a line. So out of that one stencil, I've got three stencils straight away. Now to practice your aiming, as I did earlier, I came up high and shot lots of colour down there and it went all over the place. So this is a really good one for practicing. So we just pick out one leaf, aim right to the bottom of that leaf so that it's slightly darker. And then you get a lovely shaded effect. So you can very easily do your own little vine growing up the side of your cake, as you can see. I want to show you another great tip, which is doing splats and scary trees. So we turn the airbrush on and go to low. I'm going to use blue for this one. A couple of drops of blue, two, three, four. Now, to do a little splat, we come down to the paper really close, gently pull back the lever, and it creates a little splat, as you can see. Now, as it's Christmas time, we can very easily turn these into little snowflakes. So if I do this, and gently pull up. Now, if this was a cake, you would turn the cake the same as I am with the paper. Gently pull back the lever and work our way round. Now we have our own little stars with our splats. Another great tip is how to do grass. It's exactly the same as you do the splat, but this time we slowly move across the page. So this creates a lovely grass effect. Really good for those springtime effects. And this is one of my favourite things I love doing, which is my scary trees. So we start at the bottom of the page here, and I'm going to pull back to release lots of colour. Now let go of the, of the trigger, and then we chase. So we're chasing that ink up the page to create a wonderful scary tree. Now we can use the lid of our colours, and I'm gradually going to airbrush around and closer to the centre and then when I lift that off you can now see why I call them scary trees. Now I get asked quite a lot about putting metallic colours and different brands of colours through the airbrush. Now you do need to be careful with this because there's quite a few out there that say they're suitable for airbrushes but they can actually damage it. So please be careful. And I want to show you a quick tip now which will help you. So all you do is you get the desired colour that you want to put in your airbrush and then you put a little blob of it on the paper, not in your airbrush. Now with the air I want you to chase it up the page as if you're doing a scary tree, like we've just done. So chase it up, and as you can see, it flies up the page quite easy and quite random. So that's the effect we're looking for. Now when you look at this, there's no lumps and bumps in there, there's no grain, and it's flown up there quite quickly. So that means it's suitable to go through the airbrush, it won't block it at all. Now if it looks more like that section there, then it's obviously too thick to go through the airbrush and it might clog it, so please be very careful what you put through. So now I'm going to tell you about a quick little troubleshooter. If you um, have trouble with your airbrush, as in the lever goes very wobbly, all you need to do is unscrew the back of your airbrush because normally, I'm going to say 9 out of 10 times, it's the tension that's gone on this little bolt here. So all we need to do is unscrew that. Please be careful, don't lose it. Gently pull the needle out and then push back in again. Make sure it's in quite firmly and then gently screw that little bolt back on. Nice and tight 
and screw the back piece on. And now when you go to your lever, it should be pulling backwards and forwards nice and tight again. Now another common little problem that we have with the airbrush is when you turn your airbrush on, you've got a constant flow of colour, even though you're not touching the trigger on the airbrush. Now this is really easily fixed. So turn your airbrush off on the compressor, unscrew the end, unscrew the little bolt. Now we pull the needle out gently, push the needle in tight, because it's just that the needle's coming a little bit loose. Tighten it up. And then when we turn our airbrush back on, as you can see, there's no colour now, unless I pull the trigger, and then it works beautifully. Now, most importantly, you should always be cleaning your airbrush. So I'm going to show you how to do this. A lot of people say that you can put alcohol through. That's absolutely fine, but it won't clean it thoroughly. So I'm going to show you how to clean the airbrush thoroughly. We turn it on and then to low. Now get a little piece of tissue and screw up for me. And then we put the cleaner in the top. Now you can rinse with a little bit of water first. And then half fill with cleaner. We get the piece of tissue. Now I'm going to block the air from coming out of the tissue and then I'm going to pull back and can you see it all bubbling? Now what this is doing is actually flushing all the colour out. So you can see on that piece of tissue all the different colours that we've been using today. So spray all into the tissue. Again, please don't spray into the sink because it will just come and bounce back at you. So it's still coming out a little bit blue, so I'm just going to put a little bit more colour in. And spray out. You can see now I've got some green coming out. And you can see it's bubbling through all the joints here. That's perfectly normal, that means it's being flushed out lovely. And then just blow on the back of your hand to make sure there's no colour on there. Make sure it's coming out all nice and there's just air flowing. And then it's ready to be put away. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this short video and I hope you've learnt all the skills now to take away and have lots of fun with your airbrush. Good quality airbrush, you'll be able to create these stunning effects.